So thank you. You said we could shut cameras off? You can go cameras off, absolutely. All right, um, everybody, thank you all so much. Um, we've got our entrepreneurs, our RMMFI staff, and our amazing supportive mentors and volunteers with us tonight. And this is the Northeast Colorado's first e ever um, business launch boot camp retrospective one. So we're just gonna jump right into it. We've um, Hopefully this will be a fun experience for everybody. And we can give our entrepreneurs some really positive and constructive feedback uh, as far as the work that they've already done to make their businesses happen. So our announcements, uh, first we're going to do some announcements. After that, um, we're going to do the rules of the retro. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and allow the entrepreneur presentations and the last thing, we're just going to do a little feedback for them so that they can get some, some feedback as to how their retro went. This is our lovely staff. I couldn't fit all of them into one screen, but I did want to highlight um, that to our entrepreneurs and everyone else that it's not... It, it's not just me out here. It's not just, uh, you've got a whole team of people who have you backing you, supporting you, and want to make sure that your business is absolutely successful and the best that it can be. So know that you have not just me and not just your mentors, you have an entire RMMFI staff supporting you through your journey. Next, uh, I just want to let you guys know that we have a, cap a new capital coordinator, Catherine. Um, she likes to go by Cat. She's going to be here to assist, uh, uh, help assist you with any capital needs. She looks forward to meeting you guys and learning about all of your entrepreneur endeavors. Here is her contact information if you'd like to take that down. And Cat is actually here with us in in our uh, retro tonight, so we're happy to have you here, Cat. Yeah. Hi, everybody. If I have spoke with some, if not most of you or all of you, i um, here to support you by any means, anything comes with financial loans and why not. Uh, please feel free to reach out to my phone or my email. You have any questions or by, about loans, grants, or about anything in general that you feel like I can support you with. So yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Thank you so much, Kat. Okay. Everybody, you can feel free to follow us on, on, on all of these different avenues <laughs> and platforms. We've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, our actual website, and pretty much anywhere you can, anywhere that you can find something social media, you could probably find us. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Opt into the RMMFI community and volunteer newsletters. You can do that at rmmfi.org slash newsletter. Our newsletter is the best way to learn about RMMFI news and uh, news events, hear the stories from our local entrepreneurs, and learn about other ways that we can smor support the small business community. All right, mark your calendars. After this is going to be our retrospective two, which happens on Thursday, April 20th. Followed by that is going to be graduation on Thursday, May 18th. We are going to do an in-person virtual hybrid event. It's going to be from 5.30 to 8.30. It's, the in-person location is still to be determined, but I'm looking for a fun location for us to all be able to spread out and enjoy you guys graduating. So that's going to be exciting. All right, now we're going to go over the rules of the retro. Tonight, we are, as you guys all know, we have four pillars to our, to our program, marketing, operations, financials, and management. We have been working really hard to, to narrow down our marketing and operations pillars. So those are what we're going to be, um, what we're going to be going over tonight. So one of the things that we're going to be highlighting is the right message to the right audience our capital needs that we've been able to identify over this um, over this period, our target market, which is our 4% target market, and our operations cycle. 
uh, all of the entrepreneurs are going to be presenting eight slides over a period of six minutes. With that, Doug is our Doug's my backup guy here today. He is going to be letting you guys know when we hit that um, five minute timer mark. So if you guys start to get to that six minute point, Doug's going to just jump in and let you know that there's a one minute warning. All right, we'll just kind of go over our virtual format. Um, all of our entrepreneurs are going to present the slides that they've been working on to make this retrospective happen. I'm going to be the one who controls the slides. Uh, feel free to let me know when it's time to move on or click onto the next slide. Only the mentors and RMMFI staff will be filling out the electronic scoring forms. Each presentation has its own scoring form make sure that you are filling out the correct one. <clears throat> Links to the scoring forms will be posted in the chat before each presenter. Um, to the mentors and RMMFI staff, it can be handy to have a second device to fill out the score sheets. Feedback is anonymous and all scores and comments will be shared with the entrepreneurs. If you give a score of three or below, please make sure to include some, some feedback. Um, so the this tends to go kind of quickly so what i'm going to ask for the for the entrepreneurs is if after each of your slides if you could take a, a deep breath in and out or count backwards from three or five so that our mentors and our staff can you know make sure that they're able to keep up with us that'd be really appreciated feel free to, free to take your time and um while you're presenting yourself but try to take a little bit of a breath in between each slide um i've got one more little thing on here oh please if you guys have if you want a specific entrepreneur when we go to do the the feedback forms which is going to be done in breakout rooms um make sure to dm doug that send him a private message or if you get lost or complicated or caught up and you need us to pause either shout out for us to slow down or or dm doug and he'll make sure to get that information to to me Anybody have any questions before we go on? Okay. Um, after, after we're done with the presentations, we're going to have a breakout feedback forum. We're going to chat with the entrepreneurs. We're going to provide verbal feedback and encouragement, and we're going to share our ideas and suggestions. Um, this goes kind of quick. Again, this goes kind of quickly. So when you get into that breakout room if if the entrepreneurs don't mind kind of readdress what your business was so that so that the people you're in the breakout room with can identify with that all right feedback for the like my like that little gif feedback should be high level positive and honest we're looking for constructive criticism here stuff to help help us grow um, with that, our entrepreneurs can earn up to an additional $600 towards their business launch loan eligibility when they have graduated from this program. So just so you guys know, this, uh, this is something that is just going to be able to be added on to you. Uh, go ahead, Jesse. You said, sorry, you said additional um, uh, loan dollars. Uh, I thought that was uh, included in the $3,500. Sorry. Um, or is this, you can get up to 3,500 and this is uh, $600 of that 3,600, 3,500. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Did somebody answer that from staff? He, Jesse nailed it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. And thank you, Sarah. All right. Here's the order that you guys will be presenting in. Uh, first, we've got Chance and then uh, and his, his financial coach is Doug. Doug's with us today. Um, next, I guess I... I'm not really looking at the screen, so I'm going to not say who's here and who isn't. Next, we're going to have Sabrina. She has been working with her mentors, Jack Devi and Rick Howard. After that, we have Krista coming up, and she has been mentored through um, <clears throat> with Latanya and Alec. Kristen is going to be after Krista, and she has been being mentored by Mark and John. Maria is going to be um, 
after Kristen, and she's been mentored by Maya and Natalie. And then pulling up the lead is going to be Buster, who has been being mentored by Aaron and Ray. All right, if you guys are ready, we're going to we're going to go ahead and get started. And that's going to be starting with Chance. Chance, you can go ahead right. whenever you're ready. All right. Well, my name is Je uh, Jeffrey. Everybody calls me Chance. I'm going to be the owner operator of Lefty Specialty Burgers. In case you guys noticed, I changed the name. Um, I don't have any social media regarding the business yet, but uh, you can reach me at my phone on my phone number, which is 970-363-1537. Um, it's going to be a food establishment of sorts. It's going to start out as a pop-up stand. Uh, sorry, I'm doing my elevator pitch real quick. It's a, you know, uh, it's going to start as a pop-up stand, and I want to go towards the food truck. It's all all American specialty burgers, and then just plain old hamburgers. Uh, my service is unique based on my recipes and the fact that there aren't many places to go in Sterling to get one. Uh, my competitive market is gonna is full of food trucks. There are too many to even count or describe, especially in this area. We've got some really weird ones like a mac and cheese truck and stuff like that. But I'm hoping I'm hoping I'll be able to stand out based on my specialty burgers. Um, my four percent ideal customer is gonna be people between the ages of 25 to 45, the ones that kind of kind of appreciate a homestyle burger and explore new ones. Uh, college kids could be a little picky, so I'm not really going towards them anymore. Whenever you're ready. Uh, my product or service is specialty hamburgers as a, a pop-up stand and eventually into a food truck or even just an old-fashioned homestyle burger. Uh, the price I haven't really worked with yet, but I'm figuring about a $9.95 price on average. Uh, placement's going to be on-site wherever I decide to, you know, where if there's, a, if there's an event in town or, if, you know, busy, you know, Friday, Friday when everybody's going by Walmart to cash their paychecks and stuff like that, you know, just depends on where the traffic is going to be for the day. And my promotion is just come get a burger like your dad used to make. Maybe try a new one that you that, that sounds good. Uh, my marketing tactics are, are pretty general. Uh, social media, uh, flyers around town, at, at, uh, samples at local establishments, and just plain old word of mouth. That's uh, starting out to be just me uh, as far as the big rocks. I'm going to um, the capital equipment. Equipment's going to be a big one food obviously and and then obviously customers i can't i'm not going to get anywhere if i don't have customers and it's going to be anywhere i can set up and sell a burger all right this is the fun one um my operation cycle starts there at the top and it's going to be uh finding leads and customers and all of that and then it moves on to uh, doing the prep work getting the food prepped and ready loaded into the truck or wherever you know whatever i have to be using and then um Finding my location for the day or events in the community, such as July jams, the fair, sugar beet day, stuff like that. Uh, double checking my inventory and making sure that I have what I need, so I don't run out in the middle of a, in the middle of business or something. Uh, beginning the day's business, you know, getting uh, getting somewhere, getting set up, getting opened up. Uh, next would be closing the day's business and clean up, all that you know, all that basic stuff that codes into a food establishment. Next would be depositing my day sales into the bank. And then lastly would be, you know, patting myself on the back and restarting the cycle. Um, I have found a lot of expenses so far, uh, especially uh, equipment's the big one because I haven't decided if I'm going with used equipment or new equipment yet. Uh, I've got to look into that. Food, obviously, paper products, and, you know, even just my own time. You know, it's, it's going to cost me a lot of my own time. So I haven't, haven't come up with a, with a total yet. And then funding sources, I'm going to be looking at loans, grants, business advances, uh, advances from friends, even stuff like that. And that's that's my that's my my presentation. Again, my name is Jeffrey. Everybody calls me Chance. I'm the owner operator of Lefty Specialty Burgers in Sterling, Colorado, and you can reach me by phone at 970-363-1537. I also forgot to put my email on there, but. Okay. <clears throat> Well, everybody's getting caught up uh, on the score sheets. I'd like to take an opportunity. If anyone has a, a verifying question they would like to ask Chance or have something clarified, this is a good opportunity to do that.
Okay, wonderful job. I'm going to go ahead and still continue to give, uh, make sure that all of our, our mentors and our staff are able to finish up their scorecards, and then we'll move on to the next one. All right. Um, Sabrina, I'm going to go ahead and let you take charge here. And this is, this is your show. Let us know what you need us to know. Hey, my name is Sabrina Mitchell and I own Antiquish Restoration and Design. I am located at 806 Gilmar Street, Sterling, Colorado, and can be reached at 5559. You can go. Sabrina, and, and, and yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry. You started breaking up there for a second. Would you oh, like to now? Start? Yes. Would you like to start yeah. your, your market environment? Uh, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I specialize in antique furniture restoration and custom designs, which there aren't any other companies offering the same services in Sterling area. And according to my research, there are plenty of people in the right age, or age ranges that could be interested in what I'm offering as people typically want to keep heirlooms or keepsakes in top condition so they can be passed on for generations as well as start new ones. Okay. My biggest threat would be the start of another company in the area offering the services that I am but I don't see that happening in the near future. There are a lot of people in this area, ages ranging from 22 to 80 years old, who are in financial position to have their antiques restored or have something uniquely designed. Next. The services and products I'm offering is furniture restoration and designing custom pieces. The prices will start at $150 for small restorations and go up accordingly. And custom design pieces will start around $1,000 and go up accordingly. All the work is done locally. As I operate out of my home workshop, it's affordable enough for everybody to give their antiques one last chance. Next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will be listed on Craigslist and social media in addition to passing out flyers and depending on word of mouth as well. My business is operated by myself solely. I'm responsible for getting customers, obtaining wood tools, paint, etc. All work is in my shop at home. The cycle to ensure my business uh, will operate successfully start. Well, okay, let me start over. The, the cycle to ensure my business will operate successfully starts with me getting customers, taking orders, ordering materials, getting tools needed. Then I will restore or create accordingly, as well as doing QC so I can package and deliver product and finally process payment. The major cost will be for vehicle marketing, materials, and tools. My business is being funded in part by grants, loans, my family, and mostly myself. Again, my name is Sabrina Mitchell, the owner of Antiquish Restoration and Design. I am located at 806 Delmar Street, Sterling, Colorado, and at 720-651-3569. Thank you. All right. So I hope everybody... Oh. Okay. I hope. Oh, that's me. Reverb. All right. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, I'm going to give everybody again a chance and an opportunity to get caught up on their scorecards, as well as if you have any follow up questions you might like to ask Sabrina before we go on.
I feel like I should be singing like the Jeopardy theme here, but <laughs> silence is nice. No, please no. We've done that before, and then I got all impatient and went at the end, and then uh, it was mistakenly as me being impatient and stuff and things, and it wasn't good. Okay, well. Did that take I, up enough time? Did we kill enough time there? I can keep talking. All right, we are going to go ahead and move on. Thank you. Oh, okay. Next we have Krista. Go ahead, Krista, whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. My name is Krista Moore. I am the owner of Show Me the Munchies. We make cash pockets and specialty pockets by hand from scratch using local ingredients. You can find us at Simpkins Parlor at 316 Main Street in beautiful downtown Sterling. You can find me on Facebook at Show Me the Munchies. My phone number is below and you can see my email is on my little business card right there to the left. My market environment, where do I fit? Out of the 40 or so places to eat here in, in town, only four sell cabbage pockets. I have very few competitors here. None of the other three use local ingredients. One location even ships in from Denver. Show me the munchies will keep making every item sold with as many local ingredients as possible. Show me the munchies pockets are always handmade. My ideal target customer is 60 and older retirees, both male or female. That's the older generation that remembers what a good cabbage pocket is. 28 to 45 year old busy moms on the go, something easy to pick up for the family. And 35 year old blue collar workers because those hardworking men need a good meal. My four P's are scratch made local ingredients is my product. My average price is $6.30. The placement exclusively at Simpkins Parlor. And are you super busy today? Is your family hungry, but you don't feel like cooking? We have you covered. My marketing tactic number one is social media posts. I like to use coupons. I also like to be on the radio and I do a Facebook live three to five times a week. We Operation Big Rocks. Who? It's me and the dough maker. I don't remember what the what question was, but for some reason I wrote zero and where you can find us is Simpkins Parlor. On to the operations cycle. Go ahead and click, Jen. Some stuff will fly in and fly out. There we go. Got to get supplies. And we must procure the beef. And I get it from a local farmer so that he's got to take it and get it cleaned up and fixed and packaged and bring it over to me. I've got to get supplies ready. Got to make the dough. Of course, you got to wait while it rises. Then you cook the filling. You create the pockets. You wait some more while it rises again. Then you bake and butter and sell them bad boys. Capital needs, um, not really necessarily for me because I'm already in business, but if I needed to start over, I wouldn't need too much money. So I'd probably create some samples and sell those and my funding sources would be out of pocket or grants. Keep clicking. You're doing great. And there is the finished product. How beautiful is that? Thank you so much for listening this evening. My name is Krista Moore. I'm the owner of Show Me the Munchies. You can find us at Simpkins Parlor, 316 Main Street, beautiful downtown Sterling on Facebook. And there's also my phone number. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Krista. Um, does while we are waiting for everybody to get caught up on the forms, does anyone have any follow up questions for Krista? Uh, I have a random question. This may be a dumb question, Krista. Are cabbage pockets similar to Runza's? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Just yes. much better. Oh, it's much better. <laughs> Sounds yes, good. absolutely. I love Runza's, but I will love a cabbage pocket as well. 
I also have a question for you, Krista. Who is the dough maker? The dough maker is my adorable 83 year old grandmother. She's going to come say hi right now. Say hi, grandma. Hello. <laughs> there she is. She's so perfect. We love her. Hi, grandma. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on. Next, we have Kristen. Kristen, whenever you're ready. Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen Osborne. I'm the owner of Enchanted Shadows. I'm based out of Sterling, Colorado. I am hoping that soon I'll have my website up and running at enchantedshadows.net. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Enchanted Shadows. My number is 970 Four seven three four five four zero. My competitive market is a combination of stores from Bath and Body Works, Yankee Candle Company, Sensi, and even Walmart to other resin artists and crystal shops. These large chain stores solely focus on profit and where they can cut to make more profit. Other resin artists oftentimes think resin is an easy avenue for money making and don't realize the work, effort, and time it takes to put out quality resin products. Enchanted Shadows not only focuses on excellent customer service, but genuine quality with the customer in mind. My ideal customer is women between the ages of 21 and 48, middle-class income, and live somewhere in the United States. The pagan community is a strong factor in the crystals and crystal bead jewelry, and women are primarily the ones who purchase candles, soap, and gifts for friends and family. My products include resin products, candles and soap, crystals, and crystal bead jewelry. My average pricing is about $25. dollars i can sell locally or ship all over the United States. Enchanted Shadows offers quality products backed by our guarantee of customer satisfaction. As the owner of Enchanted Shadows, I set out on a mission to offer myself and my customers the best product I could possibly make through hard work and constant research at a reasonable price. Whether it's crystals, candles or soap, or resin products like coasters, glitter pens or tumblers, you can feel assured that you are getting the best products at the best price. My marketing tactics are vendor events, giveaways, social media, and flyers. I am the owner and the sole employee. I'm looking to expand into candles and soap, so I need supplies for that. And everything is made in-house. Everything that I do in my business starts with research. Then I order the supplies, then I have to make the product. I then take that product to vendor events where I do marketing and generate leads and also make sales. After the vendor events are over, I follow up with any leads that I generated and I promote repeat business with existing customers. My capital needs so far is kind of an estimate because it varies based on shipping prices and how they change and the crystal market. But so far I have a square terminal, which is $299, opening a line of credit for $500, Supplies for crystals, $3,500, and supplies for candles and soap making at $3,500 for a grand total of $7,799. My funding sources are the RMMFI microloan, the RMMFI grant, my investor, and any sales that I do make go right back into the business. Again, I am Kristen. I'm with Enchanted Shadows, based out of Sterling, Colorado, 
And you can find me on social media or my number is 970-473-4540. Kristen, uh, I'm sorry, Kristen, thank you. That was, that was wonderful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this time yet again for everybody to make sure that they're caught up on their forms. And if anyone has any follow-up questions they would like to ask Kristen, now is the time. All right, we're just going to give it a couple more seconds here, and then we'll move on. Okay, up next, I believe, is Marie. Marie, go ahead, Marie, whenever you are ready. I, can you hear me? Yes, All we right. can hear you. Okay, yes. All right, my name is Marie Barber, and I'm the founder and CEO of Epic Wellness. Epic stand for every person is called. I run a holistic faith-based caregiving business, non-medical in nature. And my mailing address is PO Box 865. That's in Sterling, Colorado, 80751. And um, we can also be found on Facebook at Epic Wellness. Phone number is 970-467-6295. A little bit about the market environment. What does my competitive market look like and where do I fit in? There are currently 187 listings on Indeed for similar employment in Northeastern Colorado. I am launching a new business and I'm currently the sole employee. I'm currently in the process of gathering more information on licensing requirements from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment website. I've also been looking on <clears throat> other into with other agencies regarding um, to have someone look over the uh, qualifications to make sure that I'm in full compliance with my licensing requirements. There are quite a few nursing homes in this region, but there's not a lot of uh, in-home care that I found. And also what makes my business unique is that this is a faith-based uh, uh, business. A little bit about my target customer. Who is my ideal 4%, who is my 4% ideal customer and why? I feel like my ideal 4% includes individuals who need assistance with activities of daily living and their families, primarily in the Northeastern region of Colorado. I'd say around within a hundred miles of Sterling. And for the four Ps and messaging, I would say that how, how will my four Ps and brand experience offer the best possible solution for the needs of my 4% customer? And what is the right message I need to communicate to that audience? So the product is I provide quality care to support emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. The price on average is going to be services are provided at a base rate of $15 an hour and Reiki and relaxation massage is also available for an additional $20 per 30 minutes. Um, I also do provide um, as a certified uh, lay counselor and uh, life coach, I also provide those services free to charge at the client's request, as well as prayer support. And like I mentioned, lay counseling. Um, so placement services are provided primarily on site in home in the patient's homes or pardon me in the client's homes and promotion the right message if you are interested in compassionate faith-based holistic caregiving for you or your loved one call us today and that's at 970-467-6295 and i do anticipate um eventually getting a website <clears throat> a little further down the line and for my marketing action plan what actions tactics will be used to get the message out and generate leads? Marketing tactic number one, I plan on employing Facebook ads. Marketing tactic number two, message boards in local, uh, just community stores and local businesses. And marketing tactic three, word of mouth. I definitely believe that people can be a walking billboard, you know, if they receive uh, services that they uh, really appreciate, they can spread the word. 
Marketing tactic number four is newspaper ads. Nothing like good old fashioned print. And operations. The big rocks in this business are gonna be <clears throat> who? I'm currently the founder and sole employee. What I need to have, so what I need to have for to effectively and efficiently run this business is gonna be, I need to have reliable transportation as well as pro professional liability coverage and reliable internet and accounting software. Where I provide services directly to clients in their homes and I also can provide transportation for appointments, et cetera, and run errands for them. What are the most crucial activities or resources related to each of the big rocks? Number one, advertise. Advertise using Facebook ads, newspaper, from, and where do I do that? Is It's from home. And what is needed is a debit card, internet service, and, um, an outline providing services and prices to be able to provide that for my potential clients, for my leads. Number two, I need to uh, consistently check my email for leads from home. And what is needed for that is once again, the internet connection. Number three, follow up with email, um, with email, call, or text from home. Needed is the internet and the phone. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of running some of this together. Um, so what is needed, so from where is from home and what is needed is internet connection. Number three, follow up with, or sorry, I just did that. Number four, set time to meet with lead. And where I do that from, I do that from home and what's needed is a phone with service. So number five is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be once we're engaging and now we're educating our leads and we want to provide more information we can do that also from home and what will be needed for at this stage of the site will be uh just a brochure or whatever we have wherever we have our information detailing the services in prices and number six is go over the service service provider contract um the, at this point we've now had the conversion from a lead to a client and so we want to go ahead and lock that deal in by obtaining the signature we can do that from home and what is going to be needed for that is going to be internet email and e-sign capabilities so they can just go ahead and type that in and then number seven we will be providing the what will be providing service services and clients homes and what will be needed is reliable transportation and once again we want to make sure we're covered so we've got that insurance now, number eight is going to be <clears throat> now that we provided the insurance or the services and um, we have a satisfied customer, we want to make sure that we bill and track the income, mileage, expenses, and we can do all that from home. We'll definitely be needing um, email and accounting software. And um, as a little addendum, following up at the close of this cycle, what I would like to do is at the close of uh, or even ongoing during clients' cases, uh, if they would like to fill out a survey or provide feedback, I can also provide an incentive for them as well. Maybe even a gift card to one of these lovely other established businesses. Maybe they can get something from Enchanted Shadows or Simpkin. So we'll see what that looks like. And that's pretty much the operation cycle. And now <clears throat> for the capital needs, when looking at the major costs that I've identified within my marketing operations plan and how I will cover them, I first have identified that I will need to register, of course, with the Colorado Secretary of State, and I'll need to go through the license, licensing process and obtain uh, professional insurance or pro professional liability insurance. And there's a couple more things that I need to do, which of course I will have a legal person look over, make sure that I'm fully compliant. And I'll be doing this using my own income the grant money, and also the business loan obtained from RMMFI. Once again, my name is Marie, and I am the founder of Epic Wellness. Wow, that was great, Marie. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys have just a moment here to finish up your forms so that we can, um, so that we can get Marie evaluated, and then we'll move on. Does anyone have any follow-up questions for Marie while we're while we're taking this short pause? Yeah, I have one. 
Um, Marie, great job on your uh, presentation. Um, in your research so far about licensing, like what have you what have you learned? Um, like, are there any licenses for non medical care that you think uh, you're going to need? Uh, yes. We're still so, figuring that um, out. Yes. So for the sake of um, to keep everything somewhat concise, because we did have limited space on the placards for the slideshow, um, I didn't include all the details. But what I will be doing is there is an initial eight hour training in order to become uh, registered and licensed with the state of Colorado Health Department. And so that will be uh, an undertaking. And then that's also an annual renewal. So I'll be doing that. And of course, um, there's also going to be um, an agency that I found where they can look over my paperwork ahead of time before I file and obtain licensing to make sure that I am indeed compliant as I write my business plan and, and go ahead and get everything ready. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay. This, this is Latanya. I had a question. I'm having a problem with my... Um, camera so i apologize about that but um marie love your business idea i think it's something that's definitely much needed um and there's not enough of this type of of service and my only question is i love that it's faith based <coughs> but how will you handle um dealing with uh, potential clients or actual customers that are maybe not faith-based okay so what that would look like is basically so the extra services that are provided, like I mentioned, free of charge, which are, which are the prayer support, the spiritual counseling, the the Christian life coaching, uh, and Bible studies and whatnot. Those are all available by request. So if the if if the client does not have a, uh, uh, you know, a faith walk, or if if their if their belief value, if their value system is not congruent with um, my own personal or that of the business. I I'm not there to proselytize or force religion on anyone, um, but being in as much as it is a faith-based and it will be advertised as such, I anticipate that it will be primarily um, patronized by other uh, believers. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely um, something that I, I am sensitive to. And that's why the more uh, the, the, the the more religious aspects are, are going to be primarily by request. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Marie. I think we're going to, um, those were some great questions and great responses to those questions, Marie. We're going to go ahead and move on. Um, next we have Buster. Go ahead, Buster. <clears throat> uh, it's Mr. Wilgus. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. My name, my name is Jesse Wilgus. I am the owner operator at Set in Stone. That is, in fact, uh, a limited liability company as of the 21st of March. Uh, I am Northeast Colorado's memorial specialist. Okay, what I do is death dates. You can call me at 970-380-4996. Next, please. Thank you. Now, my market environment, uh, I have a limited competition in my region for the service that I provide. There are, and the service I provide is is uh, adding a death date to a memorial. Now, there are on average 25.5 deaths per week in the state of Colorado, and approximately 50% of those uh, are buried in cemeteries. Okay, Others are cremated and or disposed of and actually used for science. That's not a joke. Uh, you can actually be, uh, you know, have some Keep your body and study it as it decomposes. It's kind of weird. Uh, sorry, morbid fact. I love them. All right. Columbariums contain crem cremains, uh, which are like uh, your your uh, ashes. And many of those uh, are also done on site. My radius is going to be decided by how far I can travel and still cover all of my expenses. The average cost per line uh, for the customer is approximately $250 per line. Now, if you're doing a columbarium panel, that's up to four lines. That could be $1,000 for one panel. The average number of customers per week I would like to have is about four. That would cover my expenses, my costs, and it would pay me. My target customer is very specific. It's less than 4%. Uh, it, I will be targeting funeral home directors uh, or the decision makers at these uh, funeral homes and cemetery sections directly, beginning with those who are closest to me and again, expanding in radius from that point forward. There are currently two local funeral homes uh, in our area. There are four funeral homes within 50 mile radius. We have 13 within 100 and 28 within 150 mile radius. That's going all the way to the front range from my location. 
there are two local cemeteries and 23 within a hundred mile radius. So, and I've, I've been to, I've been to nearly all or most of them uh, in the past. Uh, I've got my favorites. You guys should go out to a place called Risby Cemetery, south of Longmont. It is beautiful. Sorry, go, go ahead. All right, the four pieces of marketing. My product is an on-site memorial inscription service. I do death dates, okay? The price, again, is $250 per line. And my marketing is going to be placed directly in front of the funeral home director or the sextant at, at a cemetery. Uh, and it will be in a form of, sorry, a portfolio. Uh, as an example of my work, I would like to give them displays and maybe my business cards with uh, uh, something carbon stone for them. Uh, that'll be a, a promotion, again, directly in, in front of the person. Marketing tactics, primarily word of mouth. Okay, again, this is going to be me contacting them, speaking to them uh, directly uh, with my portfolio to show them the quality of my work. Um, initially, I will make that contact by telephone, not for the sale, but just to meet these uh, these funeral directors in person and these sections in person. I, I like to establish that personal rapport. Future marketing tactics would be ads on the obituary page, uh, radio ads and social media ads uh, with maybe, I don't know, we've been tossing around the idea of some dark humor, some jokes about death. Let me try one. Why are cemeteries so popular? Because everyone is just dying to get in them. Anyway, yeah. Carrying on, Jen, thank you. Our operations, uh, generally, now I, I'll be the acting acting as the sole proprietor of, of this company. I, I know that's not exactly true with an LCC and sole proprietorship is, is a little different, but you know, I, I'm the guy here, I, I'm number one. I will be outsourcing some operations like accounting. I would love to do the accounting, I love numbers, but that, that's just, that's not my thing. I'm gonna be outsourcing that because I don't have time. Marketing sales will be done by me in person, again, establishing that personal rapport. And the capital required to obtain the equipment and material, uh, which I would then need to have delivered. Oh, sorry, I need to acquire my material and then have it delivered on site. Okay, the work orders are completed by me. The follow up, the, the remit, remit of payment is, is all completed by me. Uh, now, I, I've, before we, uh, the operation cycle, go ahead. I forgot it's next after capital needs. Okay, marketing. And I can break this down a little bit more for you guys. Gen time. How much time do I have? I need about two minutes. Okay, well, basically everything's done by me. Marketing, that's gonna be creating the portfolio, uh, contacting these individuals uh, by the phone. Uh, we get into sales, which is meeting with these individuals uh, and getting them to say yes, showing them how to say yes, presenting that portfolio. We have our setup and intake that's getting the customer the customer's information, the location, uh, my material uh, ready to go in place. Okay, we have the acquisition of material, and then we go on into completing the work order, getting the material and the information all in the same place. And now everything here is done on site, uh, requires uh, the plot cutter, everything. It, it will ensure accuracy uh, as well as uh, expedite the process. Uh, now that you know, will, will relieve fuel costs, uh, and honestly, it, it will maximize my profit potential. I would then have my follow up, uh, that would be getting my payment. Uh, and getting some form of uh, satisfaction, a survey of types, getting some feedback and some follow-up, getting some testimonials and something to add to my portfolio. So I've been thinking uh, about my capital needs. Sorry, the last one. I forgot where I was. Sorry, Jen, between eight and nine. You're good. Next, Ms. Howard, Mrs. Howard. Oh, wow. Sorry, I forgot my capital needs, didn't I? Equipment, yes. Uh, also in capital needs, I have, I have vehicle maintenance as well, as well as a vehicle, uh, the blasting pot, hoses and nozzles, a dead man, a generator, and my plot cutter. I know that my material is going to cost me roughly $12 per line that I complete. That's my stencil cost, my blasting medium cost. And then I have my recurring cost. I will have to pay for insurance, of course. Uh, my fuel, my marketing, I anticipate that to be uh, anywhere from 160 to, 160 to over $500 monthly. A lot of that will depend on my fuel, my fuel cost. The equipment that I can get, uh, the cost of that will be determined by the capital availability. What what I have available, you know, what do I have, in, uh, I guess, uh, in in assets that I can then turn into, or capital that I can turn into assets. Uh, I have to be frugal, I know. Um, my sources are uh, my own money, uh, as well as the grants and uh, microloans I should be receiving from RMM5. So I've been thinking about a slogan, and this is, I should have got something more to drink, i tell you what. This is, uh, 
I, this is what I was thinking of, and I need you guys' uh, feedback on this. It, it's our passion for perfection is our guarantee because this is set in stone. Again, my name is Jesse Wilgus. I'm the owner and operator at Set in Stone, LLC, Northeast Colorado's Memorial Specialist. You can contact me at 970-380-4996.